Hi everyone. I just got an email from a subscriber asking me to uh, assign this petition on change.org reinstate SBSK comment section on YouTube. Wow, I didn't know that they were taking down comment sections. Uh, you know, well, if they did that on my channel, I don't know how much I could continue. The comment section, very important to me, but also very important that people share ideas and, you know, be able to communicate with one another. SBSK, Special Books by Special Kids. And I'm going to play a little bit of the history of SBSK. Uh, I... I watched this. It's I found this very inspiring, actually. But let me read a little bit of the petition. I hope that you come over here and sign it. Um, if it happened to me, I would want people to help me out to get that comment section back. So YouTube has taken discriminatory action against SBSK and other channels that feature minors as part of an overreaching effort to combat child predation on their platform. They have chosen channels at random and disabled all of their comments without any sort of transparency or real communication with creators. Their actions were not all encompassing, encompassing. Uh, rather, many channels, especially those tied to large corporations and advertisers, have been left unaffected. They have no information for creators, communities, on how long the comments will be disabled or if the action is permanent. We at SBSK are fighting this blatant discrimi discrimination and censorship of the disability community. Our impact as a channel and a nonprofit is greatly limited without our comment section. We are heartbroken and angry for all that we have lost due to YouTube's actions. Chris and I have advocated since receiving the initial notice last week, but our pleas and outrage have been ignored. We are asking you, our community across the globe, to rally around us and to fight this discrimination, please sign our petition and include a message demanding the immediate reinstatement of comments on SBSK's channel. Yeah, YouTube. Um, okay, here's the history of SBSK. So the last week y'all have been showering this channel with love and we've had 40,000 new subscribers in the past seven days. I think it's important with many people being new, we backtrack a little bit and I tell you the history and the mission, why I do what I do. Because I know it's not typical to have a YouTube channel where a guy goes around and interviews people with a diagnosis. You might be wondering, what's this dude's angle? So I want to tell you what it's all about. But before we do that, I want to mention that throughout this video, I'm going to break up the monotony of my boring voice with short little clips of people I've interviewed over the past two years. Just like this one. When somebody meets you for the first time, what do you hope they say? I hope they say, Hey, hey Timmy, you're the sweetest person ever in this world. When considering exactly where to start the story, I struggled with where I should go but I decided I was going to start right when I finished college. I graduated with a bachelor's in communications and I encountered what many people encounter when they graduate college, an existential crisis. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, I didn't know where I was going, and I felt alone and isolated. When you meet someone for the first time, what do you want them to say to you? Hi. <laughs> At this time, I thought I'd never be a teacher. In fact, I actively tried not to be a teacher because my mom was one. She said I'd always be one. And I had a bit of punk rebel in me and I didn't want to listen to her. But what I did know is I should pursue what I love. And I loved in college playing soccer. It's what I enjoyed more than anything in the world. So I decided I was going to be a college soccer coach.
At the age of 21, I moved to a small town in Kentucky of 4,000 people and coached a college. While coaching, as fate would have it, the athletic director of the school offered to pay for my master's degree in education. The school only had three options. I wasn't going to turn down a free degree and quite on a whim I chose special education. And to be honest, I didn't think I would ever use it. I was just doing it because it was free. Right there in the camera, people from around the world hey. are watching us. Yes. What would you like them to know about you? I'm a very creative person. I love my autism. Fast forward two years, I was still coaching, traveling all over the Midwest, and I was about to finish the free degree, still not intending to use it. But I had to do student teaching to finish it out, so I go into the classroom and I'm bummed out because I don't want to have to be there every day for three months. But once again, I'm not going to turn down the free master's level education. Silas, there we go, the camera's in front of us. If you're ready to do this, show me your biggest smile you have. For the very first day, I walk into a classroom and I'm working with students who are emotionally and behaviorally disturbed. I'm teaching one of the students a math lesson and he looked at me and the first thing he said to me was, why should I trust you? And I don't know why, but in that moment, I felt like I found what I was supposed to do. I love the fact that this dude I just met could look me in the eye and ask why I should trust him. So I looked back at him and I said, you should trust me because nothing would bring me greater joy than helping you reach your full potential. Some t people have more friends and I'm not really sure if I do that or so because I really don't know how I get a hard time making friends that much. I was hooked and I finished the program. I had lived in that small Kentucky town for two years and I decided there was nothing I wanted more than to live on the beach. So I took the 1200 bucks that was in my bank account, a car with 150,000 miles on it, and I took a rumbling, bumpy trip down to Florida where I found a job working with students who were diagnosed with autism and brain disorders and speech apraxia. Now take a look at this picture. It's one of the first weeks that I started the job. I'm baby-faced, I'm ignorant, I'm in for the learning opportunity of my life. Now with the benefit of technology, we're gonna fast forward two and a half years and look what we turned into. You can tell I age a little bit, I have my big beard and my hair, but I want you to pay attention to the glimmer in my eye. In that classroom, I found something I never thought I would find in my life, a type of human connection that is really so rare in the world today. Like I mentioned, I find many things to be very surface, very, uh, you're following the rules of social interaction. But with those kids, it was just fun, and we didn't worry about what anyone else was thinking. We could just be us, and I really, really enjoyed that. So now you're wondering, okay, he was a teacher, why did he start filming different people? What's the story with that? I never wanted to be a vlogger, I was 25, 26 at this time, and all I wanted to do was teach. Nothing brought me greater joy. Every Friday, my students and I would celebrate Music Friday, and we would sing songs, I would bring in my guitar, and it was really just an opportunity for them to practice social skills and human interaction. That's life. I was really impressed with what they were doing. They were breaking out of their shell and singing and dancing in front of one another. And I wanted their parents to see. So I started taking videos of the singing and dancing so I could send it to the parents. And the parents absolutely loved it. So it became a little thing. Every Friday we would make these videos. And it honestly started to become my favorite part of the week. After my second school year with these students, it hit me. I've been with them every single day for seven hours in the classroom, and I've grown to understand them. Not everybody out there, y'all people watching, are going to have that same benefit of time to understand their intelligence, their humor. Most people won't know how to interact with them, and that truly bummed me out, because nothing brought me greater joy than being in that classroom, and I wish the world could see that. So for that reason, I proposed to the students and parents the idea of special books by special kids. And this would be a book series where students explained life from their perspective. We worked hard, we worked for months to put together a proposal and some samples, and we were denied by 50 publishers. Instead of getting bummed out, we decided we would make a Facebook page. Why don't you tell the people of the world a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, well, if you have ACC like me, 
then it would be a whole different experience. After six months, we had 50,000 followers, and ABC World News picked up one of our videos, and that sent us from 50,000 to 150,000 followers overnight. Once that video went viral, I started receiving messages from people around the world who wanted to interview on our platform. And at first, I didn't do anything because I was teaching full time, but after a few weeks, it hit me. What if these are people who are in my community? What if it's my neighbor? So I went to my Gmail and I typed in Jacksonville, Florida. That's where I was living at the time. And there were 20 or 30 people who messaged me who had either a diagnosis themselves or a kid with a condition and they, wa they wanted me to interview them. Well, I just like to see her laugh a lot. I, don't, I never like to see her sad because when she cries, I'll cry. <laughs> I did it. I started traveling around my city interviewing people with conditions while I wasn't teaching and the blog became interviewing people of all ages, all diagnoses, while still featuring interviews of my students in the class. Well after four or five months of that, our blog was up to 400,000 followers and I was getting so many inquiries that I couldn't keep up with it. My students were getting ready to go on. We were finishing our third year together and I decided I was going to take a leap of faith and do this blog full time. Never in my life did I think I'd be a full time vlogger, but I saw a need for something. A need to bridge that gap between individuals with the diagnosis and the general population. If there was only a way the world could learn about these people, they would want to include them. That was my mindset. So I set out and I became a full time vlogger. Jeff, if you could tell the whole world one thing about you, what would it be? Hi. Awesome. Now up to this point, I didn't care about YouTube. I was doing everything on Facebook because it started as just a classroom blog. I never intended for this to grow into what it is now. It's been two years since we started this Facebook page and is currently at 1.5 million followers. And it hit me, it's time to do YouTube. I want to do longer videos. I want to provide a more in-depth look into these individuals' lives. And my mom is just like, it's fine, just do what you're going to do, and just move on with it. Now it's time for the hard question. I read the comments after, and I often see people asking about my motives. Are they spiritual? Are they political? I want to get it out in the open and let you know that my mission is strictly humanitarian. If what I do resonates with you and your personal beliefs or politics, that's okay with me. And I don't want to stop you from seeing this however it is you need to see it. But I just want you to know that my only mission, my only motive with this, is to make the world a slightly better place. And I believe we can do that through social media. Well, the whole world likes this, because uh, the whole world is going to know I'm smart. Yeah, hit, 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 hooray! Wow. This channel is going to be used to connect those with the diagnosis with the rest of the world. And even if you're not part of this community, even if you don't know anyone with the condition, you can get to know how to connect with someone who has a condition. Because throughout your life, at the grocery store, at the playground, at wherever you're going, you're going to encounter individuals with all types of brains. Not every condition is physically apparent. So just take a few minutes every week, watch one of these videos, and you're going to learn about the true diversity of the human condition. Wow. <clears throat> okay. Well... I do. I actually didn't intend to play the entire video, but um, I was kind of uh, captured um, by his energy. And um, yeah, this whole uh, creative endeavor of his. Don't, can't you see how important the comment section would be for this um, channel? Uh, yeah, you can see some comments underneath uh, videos. When was this posted? October 10, 2017. But if you go to the channel and uh, look at recent videos, comment section disabled. This is going to be for Here, let's go three days ago. Pfizer's behind them. The well, this is YouTube's discriminatory new policies on destroying our mission of inclusion. Comments disabled. Okay. Well, that's like um, cutting in half uh, his mission. 
of course he would want to see, and so would the kids, and my hunch is that he might even read to you know, the kids and, and others that he is interviewing on this. He would want to read you know, the comments from around the world um, to them, but now he can't. So now all communication's gone. So please, please circulate this and please sign it. Um, and if anybody else has any other um, ideas on how to get SBSK's comment section back, please drop it in the comment section below. I feel really bad for him uh, and for all of the people that he interviews. This this is so not right. And then YouTube, of course, doesn't even tell him anything. Ignored. Comment section disabled. And we are not even going to tell you why, when it's coming back, if it's coming back, nothing. Not right. This is not right. Okay, I will link below to uh, that video that I just showed you, the history of SBSK and the petition. Please, it will only take a few minutes to sign this. And thank you, um, Eddie, for sending this along to me. Have a good night, guys.